Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault for my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, thanks you, we, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or a postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among their descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
And you fill me with the joy of salvation I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble And you fill me with the joy of salvation Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. And you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you just. Exalt you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish you can make me clean. Moved with pity he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing 
what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, for 15 years, I have, week after week, climbed into the pulpit and tried to express, in some way, the greatness of the love of God, which boggles the mind, which goes beyond anything we could really imagine or know. And week after week, there, there's a struggle to, to try to uh, communicate that, that radical love adequately. Now, this is a particularly difficult gospel because when you have to, uh, you go through the seminary and you study the Old Testament in the book of Leviticus, nobody's favorite book of the Bible, where you, uh, you get a, a deep sense of what leprosy is. It's how you come to un understand the greatness of this gospel. It's so difficult to communicate just how bad leprosy was in the ancient world. But this year, I think, we have a fighting chance of understanding it better in light of the coronavirus pandemic. Because this, in ancient times, this disease was so paralyzing, it consumed society so greatly that you wind up having people who are infected, this, this awful disease, who wind up getting infected and separated from the rest of the community, who have to identify themselves at a distance so that there's no chance contact with somebody who's sick. They have to yell out, unclean, unclean, stay away from me as I stay away from you. This great disease that more than the, the physical effects winds up having social and psychological effects, cutting off the infected person from the rest of the community, to the rest of ordinary life, to the things that would have, have, have given, uh, the, that would have characterized their regular existence. This is like the, the invention of social distancing right here. And we have a sense of that now, having lived through the past year. And maybe even to a degree a little bit uh, deeper than all of this, because leprosy you could see. You knew who had leprosy, and they were, were compelled to make sure that you knew, even from a distance, lest there be any chance encounter. But with this, you and I have to take caution, almost acting as if everybody is infected. We stay away from people and keep our distance and take all of those precautions on the chance that someone might be infected. And what's more, we go around as if we ourselves are infected. You know, we're going to take proper precautions. We're going to mask up. We'll do all of these things because we want to make sure that just in case we don't wind up infecting others. Friends, this is the reality in which we're living, and it gets us a little closer to understanding, one, uh, just how, how uh, difficult leprosy would have been, but it puts us in a better position to recognize the radicality of Jesus' love. And here it is. A leper came to him, not crying out, unclean, unclean. Now this would have been a huge, huge faux pas. He's not crying out, unclean, unclean, but actually comes up next to him, kneels down at his feet and says, help me. He manifests this faith that says, while I am cut off from the world, while I am unclean, while I am removed from, from everything, this Jesus right here can make me well. 
He recognizes that Jesus is not just any other man. He's not just a wise teacher or a role model. But he is, in fact, God in the flesh. He reaches out, says, if you wish, you can make me clean. And here's the radicality of the love of God. Jesus doesn't recoil in horror. He doesn't run to the other side of the church. He doesn't excoriate the guy. Why didn't you do what you're supposed to do? You know you're not supposed to be here. You know you're supposed to yell, unclean, unclean. What are you doing? Who do you think you are? Jesus does just the opposite. He doesn't recoil. He reaches out his hand. He touches the one who is untouchable. He breaks every social convention and every law and says to him, if I will it, that's why I'm here. That's why I came, to touch the untouchable, to love the unlovable, to bring healing to those who had lost any hope of being restored, to break down the isolation, the alienation, those who have been ostracized are welcome back. This is the radicality, the unthinkable, unfathomable, awesome degree of the love of God made present in the person of Jesus Christ on display in this gospel. And my friends, the same Jesus who stretched out his hand to this man who was afflicted and sick is the very same Jesus who does the same today and has never ceased doing so in every generation. This is the Jesus to whom you and I, sick on account of our sins, alienated from ourselves and from God, those who have experienced that being ostracized, cut off, those who recognize in the depths of our soul some degree of unworthiness, uncleanliness. You and I can make bold just as this man to draw near to Jesus and say, Lord, if you wish, you can make me well. You can heal what no one else can heal. You can restore what I can't restore on my own. You can do this, Jesus, if you will it. And the same thing he says to that man in the gospel is the thing he says to us. If I will it. My friend, my son, my daughter, why do you think I'm here? It's only for this. And brothers and sisters, we have that opportunity to experience that unprecedented, unmatched love of God, that radicality of God's love that brings Jesus into our midst and has him stretch out his hands to us. And every time we approach him in Holy Communion, and every time we uh, approach him in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, every time we draw near into his presence, we receive that same thing, that kind of love that restores us to the love of God, the kind of love that restores us to ourselves and to one another. The kind of love that says you don't need to stay off at a distance. You don't need to beat your breast and declare yourself unclean. If I will it, this is the awesome power of God. And it's there freely given for anybody who recognizing their own weakness, their own sinfulness, their own sickness, their own sin, would in humility and confidence draw near to him. We fall at his feet 
And in his great love and mercy, he stretches out his hand and takes care of the rest. Sick and sinful though we are, together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring before the Father our prayers and petitions, trusting that he hears and answers us. For all members of the church, may the Holy Spirit draw us ever more deeply into the communion for which we are made. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood a religious life, may God grant them strength and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. For oh God's grace for all military, first responders, medical and essential personnel, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice in the communion of heaven with the angels and saints, especially Elizabeth McSweeney, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. For Marion Barry Cahill, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts, for those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Edna Mahoney, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and grant what we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our, op our offertory hymn is Christians, Let Us Love One Another. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood we are fed. Everyone who loves is born of God. Jesus.
Jesus is our life, God is Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, Hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins 
sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. is Ubi Caritas.
also sing the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Ever in my mouth, let my soul glory in the Lord, who will hear the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hard as it is to believe, this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday in the beginning of the holy season of Lent. Please check the bulletin or website for all information concerning masses and events related to it. On the Monday evenings of Lent at 7 p.m., Father Hines will offer a short introductory series on contemplative prayer, followed by Eucharistic adoration and guided meditation. If you've ever wondered how to pray or if you simply desire to deepen your own prayer life, these evenings are for you! Exclamation point. Finally, those making the consecration to St. Joseph will be meeting tonight in the church at 5 p.m. Uh, and a happy Valentine's Day to you and all of your loved ones, your sweeties. Uh, great day to, to make sure you go out of your way to, to tell uh, those family members and friends just how much you love them, you appreciate them, how grateful you are to God that they're in your life. Uh, great way to, to honor the Lord, who's the, the, the source of every blessing and every gift, and it'll keep you out of the doghouse. <laughs> Please join me in the parish's devotional prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness that snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. And our closing hymn is Go Make a Difference. Diff.
difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world We are the salt of the earth Call to let the people see The love of God in you and me We are the light of the world Not to be hidden but be seen Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the world Go make a difference We can make a difference Go make a difference in the